Hey, everybody, it's me, Andy. And I'm Sean. And this is Battle of the Brews. Ooh, baby, make a backup of your files for this one. Because we are deleting everything off of every hard drive. That's what this match did. <laughs> yes. Uh, huge EMP. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Yeah. There's a card that has not been yet invented, but we were playing with the EMP. That's not true. Uh, we're goofing around, but... <laughs> Having a goof. Having a goof. But uh, if you do enjoy our goofs, please hit subscribe. It means a lot. And if you love what we're doing, please check out patreon.com slash commandersbrew. But without further ado, let's get to the spite and glory deck tech for today's game. Okay, so for this game, I am running Garna. Uh, Garna is looking to cast very efficiently costed black and red creatures, usually demons, and, and possibly just keep looping them with sac effects to get Garna back, put them back in my hand, cast them again for very cheap. I'll be playing Yarok the Desecrated. It's the new M20 commander. Uh, it doubles up permanence entering the battlefield and triggering abilities. So you're going to get double the trigger. So we're talking about ETBs. We're talking about enchantments that care about creatures entering the battlefield. All that kind of stuff. There's a lot of value in this deck, but secretly, it's all about self mill and drawing yourself to death and then winning with a jace wielder of mysteries or a classic laboratory maniac and if you really want to get in deep on this deck tech you can go check out episode 204 of the commander's brew excellent uh we've got special guests with us milo the gathering uh, on twitter he's milo de great you uh, please check out his youtube channel uh, but he'll be piloting a jor kadeen deck uh classic jor kadeen just lots of value artifacts a lot of good equipment uh, it's Voltron, but not necessarily Jorkadine. Just any one of his creatures can Voltron in. That's right. We've seen a Jorkadine on the show before, and this one plays a little differently. That one was more of a go-wide strategy. This one's go tall. Yeah. And, of course, we have Rob Norman on here playing his Rainbow Spew deck. It's the new uh, Niv-Mizzet card, and it, when it comes in, you're going to be flipping 10 cards, and you get to keep one of each of every guild. So Rob's getting a lot of uh, card advantage here uh, with the spew. Yeah, and then I guess spewing them onto the battlefield, I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, spewing them out afterwards, I suppose. Yeah, I Spew guess. usually means you're like losing value, but in this case, you're gaining it. I mean, I can't wait to see how this plays out. Let's get to the game. So excited. Another game, Battle of the Brews. Uh, we did our mulligans. We shuffled. Uh, Andy is ready to, yeah, rock. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah! Uh, not only are you ready to rock, you uh, won the die roll, so you're going first. I want you rock. Okay, well, let's see. Let's see <laughs> how often. We good? <laughs> we good? We good. We good. All know, right. This reminds me of, uh, this reminds me of Woodstock, man. Woodstock. Yeah, the town. <laughs> okay. Wood, Woodstock, Ontario, dude. Okay, okay. here we go. Uh, starting the game with a cool draw. And then going quickly with a jungle hollow. Gain one life, please. Ahead of the game. Ahead of the game. Pass the turn. Yeah, I'm waiting for you to authorize my turn. Yeah. Okay, here's hey a... Hey, man, there's no rules in rock and roll, dude. <laughs> <laughs> here's a seaside citadel. Go. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to play a term over expense. I'll crack it while y'all take your turns. Pass. Okay, I'm going to start with the Sol Ring. Ooh. Whoa, what's that? What's that writing on it, man? Oh, that's a signature from the artist. I think uh, it's one of the worst signatures I've seen. Yeah, it looks <laughs> I don't like, know if uh, I can say that. I feel bad, but... It looks like hieroglyphs. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Malecki? Uh, Mal Mike Ber Berlick? Berlick? Mike Bilek? Yo, I know a guy named Mike Bilek. <laughs> Shoutouts. And I'm going to play an Icker Wellspring, draw a card and pass a turn. All right, that's a good one. And all right, going in for this. Quick, Simic Guildgate, passing the turn as well. All right. <laughs> Here's a swamp. I'm going to tap it, return to my hand to bring out a uh, Vainfire border post. Okay. Oh, the border post. Border post. Yeah. Uh, visits. Well, it's tough to get past in the tour bus. Oh, brother. <laughs> I'll tell you, those guys, they don't mess around. Rectal skill get, comes and play tapped past turn. Cavity search. I mean, yeah. it's going to happen to you. Okay, so I am going to play the saddest hanger backwalker of all time. 
Ooh. <laughs> for two. It would be even more sad if it was for zero. Yeah, that, okay. That's, that's <laughs> true. That's true. So fill us in on what Hanger Rack does? Uh, so it comes into play with X number of counters. That's uh, X, I guess, divided by two. Uh, and when it dies, I get a 1 1 flyer for every counter on it. Ooh. And I can put a counter on the creature by paying one and tapping it. Good Not deal. Bad. Good nice. Very good deal. Thought Vessel. Thought Vessel's a mana rock! Mm -hmm. And uh, it says I got no maximum hand size. There's no rules for me, dude! <laughs> Live by my own styles. Go, Rob. It's an island and then a gear engineer. Go. Gear. Oh, he's that. He's a... Geyer? Taps oh, for two. Taps guy. for green and blue, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I knew, I knew a gear engineer once. <laughs> that guy was a fun guy to have around, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to ransack the lab. Look at the top three. One end of my hand, the rest of my graveyard. What's it called? Ransack the lab. Yo, I ransacked a few labs. You better believe it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to take this mountain... I'm gonna play it. Nice. And the rest are gonna go to my graveyard. Blood speaker and a sword of the animist. Uh, uh, that goes there too. And I won't spend this. I'm just gonna pass. Great. Right. Okay, I gotta swing at somebody. And you're you're doing a character. I feel like it would be <laughs> the worst the worst thing to eliminate you first. Uh, New strategy unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? I'm gonna go at Sean for two. You can go at Sean for two. Can I? Can I? Would it, would it help to tell you that, like, the Sean that you know is a deep character to hide? Oh, you went going. <laughs> I, see, I see what you're trying it's to like do. It's like your Bruce, this is your Bruce Wayne. Really, yeah. Batman is the yeah, real yeah, person yeah, and yeah, Bruce yeah. Wayne's so, the character. Just so you know, this this is also a character. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll keep that in my next turn. Okay. <laughs> I'll take two. And then I'm just going to play my land for turn and then maybe cast a Mind's Eye? Yeah. Ooh, what's and Mind's Eye do? Mind's Eye is a saucy card. Whenever an opponent draws a card, I can pay one. And if I do, I also draw a card. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to bring out... Yeah, rock! It's time to rock! Woo! Yeah! The crowd's going <laughs> wild! Look at Woo! everyone! Yeah, really losing their mind! The Desecrated. He's got Death Touch and the Life Link. And uh, if a permanent enters the battlefield, it causes a triggered ability uh, I control to trigger. It happens like, one more time. Would you say oh. it's an encore? I would say it's a wicked <laughs> encore, dude. Bob Seger kind of, you know what I mean? That kind of epic encore. You ready? I'm ready. You ready to rock? I'm ready to rock, Let's man. Let's do it. Okay. Go for it. All right, here we go. <laughs> You're going to like this, actually. Mm. Yeah, rock. I will, yeah. Because this deck is all about puking. Ooh. So this is niv Mesut. This is Rainbow Spew. It's one of my favorite pastimes. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see what we get. So when this card comes out, I'm going to uh, reveal the top ten cards of my library. For every guild, I can put it directly into my hand. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh. So I'm taking four. I'm taking a Leyline Prowler, a Frilled Mystic, a Time Wipe. Oh, not a Cure's Follower. Negative. I'm only taking no, three. No, no, only taking not three. Not bad, though. But not you could take bad. the Cure's Follower over the counter spell guy. No, no, no. I'll take the counter spell guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. So I just want to make sure you know your option. And then that's okay. We, we can let... I don't mind that you have a Frilled Mystic because you could barely figure out what mana you have for a Mystic. <laughs> <laughs> The chances that you have two blue and two green seem very slim to me. <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> not. Probably not. <laughs> and uh, here is a soul ring. Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think I just want to. And then it is. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> just, just so you know, I've got a stack of like cards over here that I'm just gonna cast when I want. Yeah, I just get those. That's the best command zone I've what, ever yeah, seen. Why yeah, why force up your command zone? That is, the secret is just stack up the command zone. I like to put a Sol ring on my command zone. Sean, <laughs> you're up. Oh boy! Not only do I have four mana, I also have a Cultivator's Caravan, which is a mana rock. It's the three mana. Mm -hmm. Artifact taps for any color, but it I can crew it for three and it becomes a five five. Yeah, dude. Mana rock. It's a mana rock. Oh boy. I'm not sure if I like this character yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, dude. You're either, gonna love it. I either love it or hate it. I don't know. We're partying right now. Yes, what? Yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, party with uh, Conqueror's Galleon. Oh um, yeah. So what's yeah. that do? It is a two ten vehicle, cruise for four. 
When it attacks, exile at the end of combat and return it to the battlefield transformed. Oof. I've never seen the other side, so your guess is as good as mine. Oh, really? Could be anything. Could be anything. Could be anything back there. You oh. never know. It's like backstage at a Van Halen concert. Just never know <laughs> what's back there, my dudes. Okay. We're good? Yep. All right. Sean, as a fellow comedian, why do you think Andy picked this rocker who's only listened to music from about five years? A five-year period. 1984 to 1989 only. <laughs> I mean, it's a great period for music. It is. Uh, all right, I'm going to play a very cool and good uh, close friend of mine. Uh, I met this Naga down in uh, New York City. It's Sadisi Brood Tyrant, the Naga Shaman, man. Uh, when uh, she comes into play, we're going to mill four. And if we get a creature in there, we're going to get a 2 2 zombie. We did. We got a possessed scab. And See we that. got to do it again because of Yarok. So, same thing. One, two, three, four. We got a creature each time, so I get two zombies. Kind of a budget nip visit. Bit of a budget nip visit. A yeah. little bit of a spew. Uh. You not, know, we just not uh, a full spew there. No, it's just because the bus was a little shaky, and we were just like, <laughs> and then we had yeah, not because it's not a full on puke, right? It's like it's I know a guy named Spew actually, huh? Yeah, bodyguard, good good guy. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna hold tight and uh, pass the turn. All right, because I just want to be clear that. I'm not doing things just for myself. I'm doing stuff for the table. This is for the table right now. It's a nice gift. If you got a multicolor spell in there, Sean, that's two less for you from now on. The rest of the game. Multicolor spells are two less? Yeah, that's Urza's filter. That's a gift from me to the table. That's I hope good. you guys enjoy that. That's, that's really free. Nice. Yeah, not a big deal, man. I don't want to make a big deal about it, Andy. You just negated everyone's first commander tax. Yeah. Have a great time. That's a rock and roll move if I've ever seen one. Go Gary uh, Rock Farm back to my hand. Oh, and don't even talk to me about my man Gold Gary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to play Detection Tower. So I will be able to target hex proof things if I want. Nice. Watch out. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to cast uh, Bezel Sliver. Uh, all It's a 2 2. But all slivers have sacrificed this creature. Add black black to your mana pool. Is this a sliver deck? Are you, have you been playing a sliver deck? <laughs> it is not a sliver Machine deck. head sliver over here. <laughs> yeah, I would love it. I would love it. It is not, though. Uh, I'm also going to drop down this Overeager Apprentice. It's a 1-2, and it says discard a card from your hand. Sacrifice Overeager Apprentice. Add black 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 to your mana pool. So I can uh, potentially add... Five black to my mana pool. Yeah. Look at this guy. It's not even a sliver. What are you doing? Not a sliver. What are you doing? Uh, yeah. I'm passing the turn is what I'm doing. Guys, I feel like a mean drain life is about to happen here. This is a black red version of Pross Bloom. Is that what you're playing? I don't know what that is. It's a band. <laughs> <laughs> Pross Bloom. They're from Norway. They're they're dark stuff, man. It's pretty heavy. You don't want to get into that. Alright. I am going to cast. A good friend of mine, Gisela, Blade <laughs> of Gold Knight. And it costs two less, thanks to you. No I problem, really man. appreciate it. My pleasure. So what's that mean for all of us? For all of you, it means it is a 5-5 five, five flying first strike creature. If a source would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it's double damage. Beep, beep, pew, pew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if a source would deal damage to me, it's halved. Mm -hmm. And I did that for the table. Yeah, of <laughs> I did that for the table. Spread I spread it around. You yeah, know, no, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy, spread it around. Okay, and, and go ahead and pass it. And over. just gonna pass. Okay, yeah. All right. Giselle is a mean creature, and she's probably not coming after the rock and roll guy. Am I right? No, of course, definitely not. I've already made that clear. Not, how I not feel next turn, this. at least. Right? We can right. at least say that. I, I'm just so impressed by the '80s wrestler realness that you're giving me <laughs> right now. So I can't uh, possibly. All right. So for this turn, then I'm just gonna play out uh, this friend of mine. His name is Sage's Row Denizen. Whenever another blue creature enters the battlefield under my control, uh, I can uh, tar have target player mill two, and uh, that's it. All right. That's my turn. Big swamp happening here. <laughs> Okay, um, I can do nothing. Go. So you don't have you don't have a uh, blue blue green green in there for your. 
I, can you make blue, blue, green, green? Yeah. He's got blue, blue, green now. Oh, no. Oh, he's got yeah, that, that dude. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm trying to burn you on your mana, dude. I'm going to draw Mocking me when I have a counter in my hand. That I is a dangerous audacious. game. Audacious. Yeah, audacious at the very least. Very audacious. This is three. This is Lurebound Scarecrow. Uh, Lurebound Scarecrow is a 4 4 artifact. I have to choose a color. I'm going to choose black. Uh, and as long as I control a black permanent, Lure Brown Scarecrow is allowed to stick around. But if I have no black permanents, I have to sacrifice it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this is this board is dangerous right now. Everyone's got a lot of blocking going on. So uh, I guess I'm going to pass. Okay, someone's going to have to remind me what this card does. Because it's not in English. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, Whisper I, Slope Cloak? I'm, I'm big, sure you all know that one, right? I'm big in Japan, so I can probably just read that. Okay, yeah. If, is it in Japanese? It is. Okay, great. So I know this one. <laughs> Whisper Silk Cloak, uh, it equips for, I think, three? Just read uh, it. Well, it's two. That's <laughs> the two? one thing I can I read. I just can't see that from here. <laughs> okay. It equips for two, it gives uh, the creature Shroud, and cannot be blocked. And when it comes to the play, it does sacrifice all your creatures. Ah, oh, oh, they got me. I don't see the character for that, but it might be a Narada <laughs> or something. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and equip it. Might as well do it to Gisela. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So and Detection it, Tower does help me target things with Hexproof, but it does not mention Shroud. Yeah. Because they made this card when they stopped carrying, when they yeah. just pretended Shroud doesn't work. That's why Arcane Ooh. Lighthouse is the far superior card. Should have gotten that one in Japanese. <laughs> yeah. 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 Then it can say whatever you want it to say. You know what? I'm sorry. Uh, we just met. Rob. 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 What you've just done is invited 10 new cards to go to my hand. I will absolutely. <laughs> no, you, it's, it's unblockable. unblockable with oh, no. It's in Japanese. You have to take 10. <laughs> so I take 10 damage? This guy's a menace. <laughs> this is rude. Okay. Double, doubled, doubled because of Gisela. 10 damage. Oof. Gisela is such a, a terrible menace of a card. Oof. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and pass the turn. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, okay. So, uh, listen, I, I really appreciate that you didn't attack me, but, and I'm not going to do anything about Gisela because I think it's a nice card. <laughs> Is that why you're not going to do it? It has nothing to do with the Shroud. No. no <laughs> okay. It has nothing to do with that. Don't worry about that. But I am going to play um, uh, a relevant card here, and that is Reclamation Sage. Oh, destroy any artifacts. You so got that. the Icker Wellspring. You did it. You <laughs> nailed it. Oh. So I'm definitely going to hit uh, uh, the, the Whisper Silk Cloak. Deal. Um, and I th think... You're getting two of those triggers. I get two of triggers because of Yarok. Yeah, because we like to rock. Um, I think I'm also going to hit... I mean, the, uh, the next best artifact out there is... You know what? I'm going to hit Rob's thing here. This, this for the table? That's the rudest thing to do at a party. That's what I'm gonna do. Wow. You know what? I respect that. Even though you did get rid of the Whisper Silk. I could have got rid of your mind. I know. Eye. I know you're Boros. thinking about it. It's I... Boros. You know, you you know, you got to be at least even. All right. That just brings you up to even. That doesn't even give you an advantage. This was for everyone, Andy. I know, but not so much for me. Oddly enough. Okay. Okay. It doesn't really do in its thing for me. All right. Shields up. Pass turn. All right. I'm gonna jack her. I'm going to cast um, Hostage Taker, and I am going to... Uh, what this does is when I enter the battlefield, I'm going to exile target artifact or creature, um, and I am going to exile this Gisela. Mm. It looks so much fun when you're attacking me, and I want to do it myself. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so that's exile. Fair's fair. That's great. Do I have the seven mana? I don't. Because you can, you can spend seven to cast I can, Gisela yourself. Right, with the Hostage Taker. Mm -hmm. If the Hostage Taker is dead, can you still cast the Gisela? If the Hostage Taker is dead, you just get Gisela back yeah, to the right. battlefield. To the battlefield? Yeah. Yeah. Woo -hoo! Some weird incentives there. Okay, <laughs> well, I can't cast it this turn. Um, so I will have a nice time. Go. <laughs> I'm going to draw a card. Boro, drawing all these cards. What's happening? If I only someone could have got side. rid of it. I should right, have, eh? Andy? I should have maybe. I, I should have yeah. thought about it. <laughs> but you got to make friends. You got to keep friends. You got to make. You're just friends. making friends with Milo. Yeah, I know. <laughs> all you've he, done. At the time he had a Gisela, he was doing. You know, he looked like he could really murder me pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna cast uh, a new uncommon planeswalker Ooh. from War of the Spark. This is Angrath, Captain of Chaos. So now, as a side effect, all of my creatures have menace. 
and I can minus two to amass two, which is to say put uh, two counters on a zombie army. So it starts with five. Have not decided yet if I want to get a zombie amass token. I may, but what I do want to do is rob. Yeah. I am going to, since all my things I've missed, I expect you might get Gisela soon. So I think that this is my only opportunity to attack with Lurebound Scarecrow. Uh, it's a 4-4 four, four with Menace. As far as I can tell, you'd have to put Niv-Mizzet and one of your other creatures, which I assume are too valuable. Mm. This is a 4-4 four, four guy, though. Yeah. You should with probably menace. throw that hostage taker in there. I'll take 4 damage. So just to be clear, I've taken 14 damage. And all I've done is brought an Urza's filter to the table. <laughs> and then had it destroyed. Yeah, it destroyed. I mean, you did draw three cards off of the spew. Yeah. That's intimidating. There's some weird politics going on right now. <laughs> so I've hit you for... I've, I've done some damage, so I will sacrifice Basil's sliver to add two black. Basil's gonna be mad. Basil's so mad. And I'll pay these two red for Rakdos, Lord of Riots. Woo! Um... Yeah, uh, I can't cast him unless I did damage, but I did. I have six six flying trample and creature spells cost one less for each life your opponents have lost this turn. So right now my spells are four cheaper, but I've got nothing to really take advantage of that. So what I'll just do, I'll just make my little zombie army token. Little zombie army, it's a zombie army token, uh, and I'm going to pass the turn. Okay. I'm going to play an Unwinding Clock. Oh, yeah. What's that do? Uh, so, untap all artifacts I control during each player's untap step. Okay. And I'm also going to play... Very uh, helpful for mana rocks! Just saying. Actually, you know what? Uh, yeah, okay, I will. I'll play Plague Mirror as well. Whatever. That's Christmas. Forget about it. Your turn. <laughs> in fact, look Ooh. out. Just Ooh. so you know, it is, we are filming this in July. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, let's get a Guardian Project going. Uh, Guardian Project is that enchantment that says whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under my control, if it doesn't have the same name as another creature I control or a creature card in my graveyard, I can draw a card. So in Commander... That's everything. That just says is that's every creature. It comes in, you draw a card. It's great. So uh, let's um, sort of reveal my game plan here a little bit. Does this trigger twice when... It sure does, because oh. it causes this permanent to trigger. Uh, I'm going to play Lab Maniac. Ooh. So we got some triggers to resolve. Yeah. Some triggers happening here. So uh, what we And got? we all know what Lab Maniac does. If I draw, uh, if I draw my uh, card when, it's, when my library is empty, instead of losing the game, I will win the game. Uh... Guardian Project is about to trigger. So is Sage Rose Denizen. I'll do the draws first. Just uh, we'll order them that way. So one, two, and then now you have two. I Sage got two Rose Sage Rose, Rose Denizen. So I'll mill myself for four. One, two, three, four. So that was two instances of two. I didn't hit a creature the first time, but I did the second time, which means we're talking zombies. I uh, get another zombie, and then yeah, everyone's still everyone's all shields up here. Okay, yeah, that's gonna be that. I'll pass turn. All right. So now everyone knows what your rock is really about. It's about yep. self destruction, <laughs> in order to get ahead. Right. It's a high risk, high reward lifestyle. That's the spirit of rock and roll. Guys, you missed her. She's back. Oh, Giselle yeah. Gisela on a brand Huge. new team. Huge draft right there. Huge draft. Huge draft. Milo, I'm so sorry. I do have no choice but to attack you in the air. What? For six. What have I done? Ten damage to me directly to the Ooh, face. Oh, yeah. You know what? Six is getting off kind of light. I'll take it. <laughs> but, but it's you are, 12. You are taking 12 commander damage because of Gisela. So. Uh, and here's a, a root, root bound Craig for my turn. Craig. Um, oh, you guys know Rootbound Craig? Rootbound Craig, great right man. Guy. Rootbound Craig, man. He'll hook you up with the best roots. You need to go into a place. You need to get a root vegetable. He'll cook one up for you. Rootbound Craig. Rootbound Craig is incredible. Chef. Um, I think I'm done. No. Deals with carrots. Great Beastie Boy song. Rootbound Craig. Ah. Uh, get your rootbound. Get your rootbound Craig. <laughs> yeah, man. 
I never really, you know, we didn't cross paths too often. Me and the me and the boys. Craig? Oh yeah. But yeah. once in a while we play the same festival stage. Okay. So I gotta I just need to I need to connect to get Rakdos online. Uh to it's got, it's got menace. You can attack uh bro. Well oh, you only have the one flyer. Yeah, but he'll take half the damage. Yeah. Reasonable. I want to do more Rakdos. I want Rakdos to do more. So Andy or Yarok, I'm yeah. coming at you for This guy's the Six in the air, which is twelve. You're like the music industry, man. You're coming at me. I am. You, know, you don't understand I my. I want the rights to. You don't understand what I'm about. I'm. A, I'm just about money. You wouldn't accept me as a musician and as an artist. Fine, I'll take the damage. Twelve. Okay. Feels bad. Yeah, sorry. Feels real bad, man. So I've done twelve damage. So all my spells are twelve cheaper. Uh, so I'll play. God Eternal Bantu. Mm. Uh, God Eternal Bantu has Menace built in, kind of a nombo with Angrath. But when he enters the battlefield, I can sack any number of permanents and then draw that many cards. And he's got that new god effect where if he ever would go away to the Grave or Textile, I can slip him in two from the top here. Mm -hmm. So what I, I will sack a few permanents in order to draw some cards. So I'm going to sack one, two, three... I'll cycle land two. I'll cycle land four. I'll sack four of these permanents. Um, I over love your it. lure bound scarecrow and this zombie. I love talking. this level of self destruction, man. So it's four <laughs> cards drawn. So I'm going to cast my commander for black red. Uh, and Garna says, when she enters the battlefield, return to your hand all creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from anywhere this turn. Well, that's the Overeager Apprentice and the Lure Brown Scarecrow. Nice. Uh, Lure Brown Scarecrow is colorless, so it's free now. So nice. I'll just play that. I will also name black again. I feel high. Feel uh, it. I think I'll also cast Overeager Apprentice as before. And I will make one more zombie army because I sacked that last one to Bantu. I've already attacked for the turn, but Garnet does give everyone flash. It would be, would have been nice to be able to attack again, but this is a hostile board. Hostile, hostile board. That would, yeah. So I guess that's that's everything. Pass the turn. I'm gonna Ooh. put a counter in there. Deadly turn. Big turn. Okay, we're gonna play a land, and I'm gonna play Steel Shaper's Gift, which lets me search my library for an equipment card and put it into my hand. Ooh. I do have to reveal it, so there's no shenanigans. But. Yes, you do. You sure do. Uh, it can't be shenanigans. That's a sorcery. It's also an Irish band oh. <laughs> that are just garbage. I'm going to grab the Sword of War and Peace. It gives my creature plus two, plus two, protection from red and white. And whenever it deals d combat damage to a player, they take damage equal to the number of cards in their hand, and I gain life equal to the number of cards in mine. Okay. And then, I'm not going to play it. I'm going to play this instead. Thematic Compass. Ooh, so Thematic buddy. Compass lets you pay three to search up a basic. Yeah, and reveal it and put it into my hand and shuffle my library. Then, at the beginning of my end step, if I control seven or more lands, I can transform it. How many lands do you control One, right now? One, two, three, four, seven. So you're, this is going to get transformed at the end of turn. Yeah, okay. yeah it is. And and I, you, I happen to know what it turns into. I've oh. never seen it. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, I... Guess I'll play a Palladium Mirror. Mana, rock, Mana, on a, rock, and roll. Yeah. On a body. And I'm going to pass the turn and flip this. It flips into... Spires of Orasa. So you can tap it for colorless mana, or it's a Maze of Ith. It'll untap an attacking uh. creature, and then that creature... Uh, you remove it from combat. Um... I'm gonna bank on the fact that because my uh, my win condition is a good oh I don't know 80ish cards away uh, maybe people understand I'm not really threatening at this moment uh, so I'm gonna play um, I'm just gonna evoke it I'm gonna evoke Mold Drifter. Okay, so we got a lot of triggers. A lot of triggers. What are this they? is yeah rock. This is rock and roll. So we're gonna get two uh, sage rows, uh, two draws, and then Mold Drifter additionally will draw us two and two. So in total, I'm gonna be drawing six cards. And milling four. For three mana. For three mana. <laughs> I'm going to draw five cards. Are you going to pay that all that? <laughs> no, that's good. I like to help out my friends, man. You know, it's all about the music, dude. One, two, three, four, five, 
six grapes. And then mill, mill, we got us another zombie. And mill, mill, we got us another zombie. So we got a couple zombos. Two more of those guys. Great. Okay. And my next turn will be to play a Cephalid Coliseum. What? Yeah, what? Uh, Cephalid Coliseum is uh, just a uh, land that taps for blue and deals one damage to me. Comes in on tap. But if I have threshold, I can pay blue and tap it, sacrifice it, target player draws three cards and then discards three cards from his or her hand. Okay. So, you know, just a quick, like, cycle three cards for sacrificing this land. Uh, and uh, then I will play... And hopefully we get to see it actually happen sometime in the game. Wild Pear! Whoa. Oh, baby! Wild Pear! I heard an episode pear. about this yeah. from, from your channel. This is my favorite card in the whole deck. It is the, the, not the centerpiece. It's not built around this card, but this card is the most fun in the whole deck. So hopefully we get to at least see it happen. So what does it do? Wild Pear, uh, it says that whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if it was cast from your hand, you get to search your library for... A, car, a creature card with the same total power toughness. So, for example, if I just cast Sadisi here, who's a 3-3, I get to search for another creature that in my library that has a total power toughness of 6. So it can be like a 2-4, or a 1-5, or also a 3-3. So I'm allowed to do that. With Yarok, I can do it twice. Cast one creature, get two for free. To the battlefield. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, do we? Very similar to Wild Pair, I'm going to cast a spell called Unexpected Results, and here's how it works. I'm going to shuffle my library, and then I'm going to reveal the top card. I get to put it directly into play. If it is a land, then I get to bring Unexpected Results back to my hand. <sighs> Big spew coming up, guys. Big spew. Ready. Regenitus. Okay. Nice. It's going to go back to my hand. That's awesome. And the land goes into play or the land goes into your hand? It goes into play. Cool. Cast it again. Might as well. I mean, not a lot else going on right now. Guys, unexpected results again. Oh, Here we man. go. Big spew. Big spew. Here we go. It's another land. Okay. I, that's good, though. I, it's, it's a lot of land. Cast it again. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's see what happens. Run Here it back. Go. Run it back. I'm going to expect a land. <laughs> yeah, this is becoming a expected outcome. Yeah, this is yeah, exactly. All right, third unexpected results. Here we Big go. Big spew. Here we go. My it is another land. land. Very expected results. Uh, you, you just ramped three for fifteen, <laughs> man. Like you just did it. You just lived the dream. <laughs> You're doing it. I'd say that's a great card in you, my books. If Urza's filter was around. Think how great that would be. Oh, oh that would man. be great, right? That would have been sort right. of okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you have Sean? <laughs> so I just want to, like, have we all been re noticing that Milo, because of Unwinding Clock, you're able to, on all of our upkeeps, draw so many cards? Draw a card with Mind's Eye because of Untapping Matrix, yeah. add a counter to Hanger Bag Walker. This is, yeah. this is the thing. It's good, right? Uh, well, it, as since I'm black red, I can deal with artifacts if I have the cards, but I currently don't. Uh, but I will cycle this Baron Moor to see if I can get some. Uh, I want to do some damage to somebody, but I don't even see. Even though I have a flying menace, you've got two flyers. You're open to flying, but I feel bad just coming in. I, you've got your Maze of Ith type of card, so that won't work. So my only option then is to... 24 damage, really? Come on. Well, this is just 12. I know, 24 damage in total from one guy. I know. What's my life total? Uh, so going into this, 29. 29. Take another 12. Taking, taking the 6? Yeah, I got, I got no is, flyers. Which is 12. What I'm going to do is pay these two. So all my cards are, once again, much cheaper. I'm going to pay two with the discount to cast Desecration Demon. It flies. It's a flying 6-6. Six, six. At the beginning of each combat, any opponent can sacrifice a creature. And if they do, I tap Desecration Demon and put a plus and plus encounter on it. So before combat, you have the ability to tap this down by sacking a creature. Uh, a demon came into play. 
And in my graveyard is Blood Speaker, which says whenever a demon comes into play under your control, put it from your graveyard to your hand. I will do that. I will also cast it for a single black because that's what it do. Because mm -hmm. it's cheap because Rakdos. When I do cast it, when it comes in... Uh, so no, this, I'm wrong. At the beginning of my upkeep, I can sacrifice this. If I do, I search for a demon, put it in my hand, and then shuffle. Where? Uh, this is a tough match. Uh, I'm going to pass the turn. Nice. Nice. For six mana, I'm going to play Oriok Survivors. They mm. are a 4-6, and when they enter the battlefield, I can return an equipment card from my graveyard to the battlefield and attach it to them. Nice. I'm going to choose this. Whisper so close. Nice. It makes a comeback. I'm going to play a sort of War and Peace. Yeah. Thought so. And then I'm going to go ahead and equip it to my Hairback Walker. Oh. Protection from red and white. And then I'm going to equip the Whisper Silk Cloak there. Whoa, Voltron ended it up. And. <laughs> Makes sense. And I'm sorry, Sean. I mean, it's just is... protection from red and white, right? I can and unblockable. Black. Oh, it's unblockable. Uh, so, you're attacking me with an unblockable hangerback walker. It's shroud, untargetable. Uh, I, I'm going to take how much from it? It is currently so it's, a six six. No, it's an eight eight. 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 It's an eight eight, and then uh, yeah. I'm going to take double. Well, yeah. so so far no blockers. Are you doing any other spells before no. damage? Okay, so I'm going to take sixteen. From that thing. And then what does the sword do? Uh, it deals damage to you equal number of cards in your hand. Okay, so first I'll mark the 16 from the thing. Does Gisela does does double all damage? Yes. Ooh, brother. So and this is card damage. have out. Yeah, it's damage. I currently have four cards in my hand, so the sword will do eight to me because of Gisela. I'm going to gain ten because of cards in hand. You're going to gain... You got ten cards in hand? Yeah, I do. I haven't had to discard yet. Whew. Looking good. Okay. You know what? I got to discard some cards now, so we're basically even. <laughs> yeah, that's how that works. So I move to discard. And then pass it to you and untap my artifact. So we got to get this wild pair going. We got to see how this card works. Am I right? Yeah. This is going to be a real, real good time. You guys are going to be happy you let this stick around. Okay. Yavi Maya Granger. Comes into play, search the land, put it on the battlefield tap, basic land. Get to do that twice. And times. you're also doing the... Then I also get to do Guardian Project two times. Then I also get to do Wild Pair two times. So what are you doing first? So let's just get the two lands real quick. Bam. And bam. And what is Gavin My Granger's total power and toughness? Four. So you get to find two fours. Two fours, right. So, there are only two fours, I believe, left in my deck, seeing what I've milled. And I know what they are. Okay, so we're just going to get one. There's only one four left in the deck. Bummer. But, all right. So now I'm going to do the draw triggers from Guardian uh, Project. One, two. Great. Now, because of this uh, Ravenous Chupacabra Wild Pair situation, Choops, my man Choops, needs, gets to hit two times. So he gets to destroy two things. I'm going to hit... Gisela and Rakdos. Wow. Doing a lot of those two cards have been really a pain in my side. You know what I mean? Uh -huh, yeah. Really been uh, that the getting rid of them really in my craw there. So uh, after that, we'll go ahead cast a little guy named Green Warden of Murasa. So here's the triggers for this: two draws from the Guardian Project, two wild pair searches. Although there is only one, so we're going to be okay What's on that. What's the total? Nine. One nine, okay. So I get one nine total power toughness guy. So in this in this instance, I'm gonna do the search first. Here he is, Sepulchral Primordial. Okay, now we're gonna do the shuffle. All right, now we get two triggers from the Guardian Project. Now, draw one, two. Oh, this is just enter the battlefield, so actually I get them for these two, Never mind. Okay, now I also get to draw two from Sepulchral Primordial entry. One, two. Not sure. Great. Sepulchral Primordial is going to bring back two creatures from everyone's graveyard, except for my own, my opponent's graveyard. So, I'm going to get this Leyline Prowler. I'm going to get this Gisela. I'm going to get that Rakdos. And the other one you have in there. 
My man Basil Sliver, I love it. All right, that is, uh, that's where we stand, pre-combat. All right, also, final trigger in this whole stack, I'm gonna draw, uh, I'm gonna bring a card back from my graveyard with, uh, uh, to my hand with Green Warden of Mirasa. Okay, and that card will be Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. Rock and roll. Okay, now we'll go to attacks. And Sean, I'm gonna attack you with five zombies because you did me dirt and you attacked me so much with Rakdos. And here's Reclamation Sage and Sadisi already also coming at you. I'm gonna mill three for the Sadisi trigger. I did not hit a creature, no more zombos. Okay, so how much damage is that coming in? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 15, doubled. 15 doubled. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna tap my blood speaker to turn Cultivator's Caravan into a 5-5. Five, five. Uh, and now I'm gonna declare my block. So Sidisi, I'm gonna put my Overeager Apprentice in front of Sidisi because I can sack it. I'm gonna try to do that. And I'm just gonna put one of these in front of all of the others. So I've got a 5-6, a 5-5, five, five, a 4-4, four, four, a 3-3, three, three, a 6-6, six, six, and a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, as far as I know, if mine are 4-4, four, four, that's a trade. If mine are bigger, a zombie will die. And if mine are smaller, my things will die. Yeah. <laughs> so let's say I'll keep Rex Sage alive because I'm sure you're probably going to bring it back. So nah. that's, how, that's how we'll do this. So as okay. far as I know, um, Lurebound Scarecrow's a trade with a zombie. Zombie army dies to a zombie. Desecration demon eats a zombie. Garna dies to a zombie. Cultivator's caravan eats a zombie. God Eternal Bantu eats a zombie. And Overeager Apprentice, though, what I do this out of order, but I want to sack it before the damage phase. Yeah, I'll sack it before the damage phase to, and I have to discard a card, but the, hang on a second. So when do I, can, can I use that mana? Right, I don't think I can use this mana though because I think I lose it between phases, which includes the combat phases. I have to sack it in Declare Blocks. Every rose has its thorn. So, yeah, that was, that's what, the, so yeah, I took out a few zombies. Uh, Good number. And I'm not going to sack Overeager Apprentice to gain mana because I can't use it. So... I'll just lose all that and and that's that's how it is. But I lost no life. Uh, okay, I do not. Okay, and then um, I'm gonna play, after all that's uh, done, second main, I'm gonna play a choked estuary and I will reveal a uh, island or a swamp from my hand. Ta-da, it's both. Oh. Um, Style points. So it comes out uh, untapped. We'll just uh, we'll just move on from there. We'll pass the turn. All right. Still no need to discard because of the thought vessel. Uh, no. Okay. I'm going to go to attack. You're going to go to attack. I would like to sacrifice a creature to tap my desecration demon. Yes. Oh, I see. Okay. So during combat, My Milo's sacking a creature to tap my desecration demon, which puts a plus and plus one honor on it. But I bet you you're doing that to sack. Yeah, I get six one one flyers. Six one one flyers. From what? Uh, when this dies, I get a one one flyer for every counter on it. Ah, cool. So although it was true, Milo had no flyers. Now that we are in the combat phase, Milo does have flyers. Okay, well, um, I've uh, announced an attack, and uh, I will declare no attackers. Great uh -huh. job, everyone. That's Great the end job, of my everyone. attack. Um, now everyone seems to be tapped out of mana. I'm not. I'm not. I have four. You're not? You have one mana? I got one mana plus this Basil Sliver. Basil Sliver. Okay, I do have an X spell. So this is this is the bluff I have to figure out right now. Mm -hmm. You can't counter anything. You're tapped out. You have... Two, two black and a blue. Two black. Or, two black, or three black. Oof. This is going to be tough. Sorry, I just, I just need one second here. You can check my graveyard too, because that, will, that might ease some of your worries if you're worried about me having a counter spell. Rob, can you do me a favor and get your forest off my planet? Jeez. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> things, are, things got really hostile for no reason all of a sudden. Talking boundaries. I asked One, you politely two, three, to do me this favor. I don't six, think that's hostile. Boundaries, my Just man. Just get your GD lands <laughs> off my GD playmat. <laughs> I remember when Vince Neal didn't want me sleeping on his couch. Similar situation. 
Mm. He said, hey, man, can you get off my GD couch? He said GD. No. He didn't say the real thing. He did say the real thing. <laughs> oh, gosh <laughs> dang. Gosh but, dang. Uh, he, it's mostly because he didn't know who I was. <laughs> so um, I, I, I do have um, a counter, but here's what I think. If I keep Andy alive and I do this move, he will kill me regardless. So I'm just. I'm not going to kill you. Hey, let's talk deals here. <laughs> let's talk deals. I don't even really want to be attacking in this deck, so I'll just relax. Here's I'm going to do the big swing. It's a um, debt to the debtless. So it's twelve. You're going. Everyone's going to lose um, twelve times two. So it's twenty four life, and I'm going to gain life for uh, loss in this way. I have no responses. <laughs> I got nothing. I got nothing. I don't think so. Let me check. Let me check. So uh, if we all take 24, Andy is out. I am out. Uh, Milo lives. I have you at 14. Mm -hmm. And Rob goes up 72. Ninety-eight. That's it. Okay. Can't do anything, man. I'm sitting here Ooh. trapped. I'm trapped. I'm, it's like when I'm in the studio. I feel trapped. I feel confined. And I'm going to draw for turn. Oh, Milo, can you do me a favor? Yeah. Can you get what your you deck mean? off my play, man? <laughs> wow. You are not even in the game anymore. <laughs> Rude. You are not. Rude. Jeez. You got a real Vince Neal over here, man. He's trying to get some Sky camera just... time over here. <laughs> <laughs> trying to tell people what to do. All right. So I guess. I'm going to probably cast Jorkadeen. Yeah. Ooh. Get that commander damage rolling. Right. So Jorkadeen's out. You definitely have Metalcraft. So all of your things have plus three, plus O? Oh? Yes. That which is are, correct. Which are a lot of So copters. this thing with Infect has got plus three, plus O. Oh. All my copters. Uh, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, equip the Sword of War and Peace to the Plague Mirror. Uh-huh. Uh, then I am going to equip the Whisper Silk Cloak to the Plague Mirror. Uh huh. And then I'm going to attack you. Okay. With the Plague Mirror. <laughs> Just so, what is its stats with all its buffs? So now it's a 3 3 Shroud Unblockable, protection from red, protection from white. When it deals combat damage to you, you take uh, damage equal to the number of cards in your hand, and I gain life equal to the number of cards in my hand. And is that sword letting the plague near no. do the damage, or is the sword doing the damage? The sword is doing the damage. Aha, uh -huh. so the sword doesn't do poison, but the plague is also getting plus three, plus oh from Jorkadeen. Yes. So it's a so, six. six. It's a six. Three. Three. Unblockable. Okay, well, I'm going to take six. Can't do anything about that. Six infect. Six poison. Six infect, yeah. So you do not lose six life, but you have six infect on Wow. You. I'm going to gain five. 20, ten. Six, ten. Nine, what? Yeah. It should be. And I gain 14. people think so in Commander. And so how many cards are in your hand, Rob? Uh, I have six cards. So the sword is doing six damage to you. Three of them are good. Does that matter? Uh, it does a double <laughs> damage to good cards. <laughs> uh, no, Rob, you didn't say anything. Man, you played yourself. Uh, and Milo, you gained how much? 14. 14. So you've doubled your life total. It's okay. 28. Uh, yeah. And then I'm going to be done. I have to discard a bunch of cards. Time wipe. Turn this hostage taker to my hand. Okay, so um, can I? I can respond to it. Yeah. Can, okay. Um, you know what? That's that's fine. Okay, it's fine. Okay, so I'm going to return hostage taker to my hand, and then that's going to be a board wipe. Sure. Only creatures, right? Only creatures. So I'm going to cast the hostage taker, um, and I'm going to take the sword. No chance. I'm going to deal with that hostage taker right now. He's gonna go to the fields, hopefully. I'm sorry, there's a frilled mist. Yeah, you know, oh, I should have remembered upset. that. I should have remembered oh, that. Very upset. We so saw this, all these cards we early. Saw all these cards. So this so no gaining of life. The sword is under the hostage taker, ready to be cast. Mm-hmm. The frilled mystic, I made fun of that. And here it is. Here it is. Okay. Well, that is the end of my turn. I am mana out, so go. Well, you know, usually when I play a gig, they got fans there, big fans. Giant fans, to make the From under move. the stage. Oh, yeah. Those, those kind. You know who started those? Paul Stanley. Huh? Paul Stanley hmm. from Kiss. He said, my undercarriage gets too hot, so I need you to get a big fan under there. But did he use the word undercarriage, or did he say a different word? 
I assume he said undercarriage because that's just the rock and roll term for it. That's the rock and roll term. Yeah, where everyone gets loose, so they say undercarriage. Yeah, when we're partying, we'll just be like, hey man, nice undercarriage. Okay, for seven mana, I'm going to play this nice undercarriage. Uh, mirror <laughs> Battlesphere. So you get four mirror with that? I got four mirror. Four mirror. And I'll also play a blade splicer, so I get a golem. Do you got a golem? I got a golem, man. Woo! I got a couple golems. All right. And Blitzmos gives all your golems first strike. It does. And it makes a 3-3 golem when it comes into play. Hmm. 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 And then I'm going to go ahead and pass the turn and untap my artifacts during your untap. Well... I'm going to cast the sword, uh, sword of War and Peace. I'm casting the Sword of War and Peace from the Hostage Taker. Okay. Have to do it. Have to do it. You have to. Don't, Don't have, have a choice. choice. You might as well use Don't it. Don't have a choice. Okay. Let's party. I am going to bring back this rainbow spew. Sure. Okay. Let's see it. Let's hear it. Spew 10. Spew 10. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's Good a lot of hits spew. there. Which Good guilds spew. did we hit? So we have an Azakan Seer, Wild Cantor, Karanos, God of Storms, Gross Spiral, Miss Fane, Border Post. So that's going to go to my hand. Draw five, not bad. Yeah, okay, well then I'm good. Oh, that's... Um, Sanctum Gargoyle. Returns What's he an do? artifact from the from graveyard. graveyard to my hand. Oh. I'm gonna choose Plague Mirror. Sure. And mm -hmm. I'll cast the Plague Mirror. Mm -hmm. Whoa. And then I'm gonna play Swiftfoot Boots. Okay. And I'm gonna equip them to my Plague Mirror. Uno momento, por favor. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna stop it. I'm gonna cast a Banish into Memory. So um, I'm going to remove him from the game, and then I'm going to draw cards equal to his power, which is one card, and then I will discard one card when he comes back into play during my next upkeep. So it will. So you're basically slow blanking it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, when it, this is a re remove it from the game. Okay. So, so it's temporarily okay. exiled. It's a sure. flicker. So Robbie's going to draw one card, and then when does it come back in? During my next upkeep. Okay. During your upkeep. Okay. Equip the Whisper Silk Cloak on the Mirror Battlesphere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to crew up the Galleon, uh -huh. and then I'm going to move to attack step. Uh -huh. I'm going to attack with the Galleon and the Mirror Battlesphere. I'm going to tap two Mirror to make that a 6-7 and deal two direct damage to you. Yep. And then I'm, I'm ready for you to declare blockers all right, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to block with everyone for the uh, galleon. Okay, I'm going to order them one, two, and three, and we'll toast this for them. Toast them. And you take a um, total eight from that? Yeah, six from the sphere and two from the mirror. That right? I like it. Nice. I like it. That could hey, be the man. name of your next album. That's a good six from the mirror, two from the sphere. I don't know why we don't always say that with mirror battle sphere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Okay, I'm going to pass the turn to you, and during your untap step, I'm going to untap my artifacts. All right. Yeah, might as well do it. I'll do Clan Defiance. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nine damage, so nine damage to this um, mirror, then nine damage to you, Milo. Sure. Um, I will go to attacks yep. with um, Niv-Mizzet. Sure. I'm going to remove it from combat. Okay. Um, I'm going to cast um, Vizier of Deferment. Sure. What's that do? So, uh, it's a flash card. Um, when it enters the battlefield, I'm going to exile target creature if it attacked or blocked this turn. I'm going to return to the battlefield uh, under its owner control at the beginning of the next end step. So, I'm going to go do a big rainbow spew now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. another rainbow spew. Here we go. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Six. It's gonna bug people so much. Seven. Have your cards are upside down. <laughs> Eight. Nine. Ten. So unfortunately, Nicol Bolas is too many colors. Mm -hmm. It's at the bottom. 
But um, Wrath and Teferi, I have to make a choice between the two. Who? Teferi? Time Traveler? Teferi? You say it how you want to. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you know him, it's Teferi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, which is going to be more helpful to me right now. Um, I will take Teferi. Yeah. Sure. Great. And um, that's the end of a turn. Okay. Boom, boom. You look snoring? Oh. All creatures oh. tiny. And then so for Il- if Ilishnorn makes all of all of Rob's creatures minus two minus two and all of your creatures plus two plus two, plus two. absolutely wow. and then I'm gonna follow that up with a tempered steel so all my artifact creatures get plus two plus two whoa okay we said the only thing that can kill is that infect thing and maybe we were wrong maybe we were wrong and I'm gonna go ahead and equip the swiftfoot boots to the Ilishnorn okay yeah okay. and I'm gonna attack with everything. So I'm going to attack you for 48 damage. That's the whole team going in. They're all working together. I'm going to take 48 damage. Yeah, I mean, you've got the life total. That's fine. Like, Barely a scratch, apparently. Barely a scratch. <laughs> Ellis I mean, Norn just... and Tempered Steel. Yeah, right? Anthems. And then during your untap step, I'm going to untap all my facts. It all comes down to a little spell I like to call... Unexpected results. <laughs> oh my god. Unexpected results. If, if I die by... to unexpected results, I'm oh, okay with man. it. Here's, That's fair. Here's, it's here's fair. a big spew. It's a forest. I expected this comes that expected. I expected that head. also. I yeah. did expect Ooh. that. Does that forest come into play tapped or untapped? Untapped. Untapped even. Oh man, that card is wow. good. This card is yeah. not good. <laughs> <laughs> Still, no matter what happens, it's definitely not good. Guys, that's because you didn't see... Another unexpected result. I'm expecting a land. It's a border post. It's a border post. <laughs> it's next best worse thing. than a land. Next exactly. best thing. Tap. Okay, well. And you have to do you have to bounce a land? No, no. No, okay. Go to spring for basic land. Oh. Just go make sure you get that land this time. <laughs> Definitely want this rude boy here on the hostage taker. Sure. Yeah. Um Definitely need to ferry here. So I'm going to cast a ferry. Uh, uh, so the static ability is you can only cast spells of sorceries. Uh, I'm going to minus three it to bounce this golem into non existence, taking it down to one. I will draw a card. And did I play land for turn? I used unexpected results. Oh, I did. I got the planes. You did, yeah. Okay, that's it. That's the end of my turn. All right. I'm going to go ahead and untap, and we're going to see if we can close this one out right now. I'm going to play Sun Home. Ooh. That gives double strike? That is yeah. relevant. Yeah. Whoa. And you're tapped out, right? Yep. Okay, so then I'm going to play this. Uh, it's just a filigree familiar. So I'm going to draw, uh, sorry, gain two life. Okay. And I am going to equip the Swift Foot Boots to it. Sure. Uh, it's an artifact creature, so it's getting plus four, plus four. Yeah. Relevant as well. And I have this. Okay, I can't do that. So, uh, so for boots, and we're going to move to attack step. I'm going to attack with everybody. Okay. Okay. I'm going to block the uh, flying gargoyle, and then the hostage taker will block the filigree familiar. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to use Sun Home. To give double strike to a bender. <laughs> uh, I lost to a bender. So that's it. And that's enough, right? And yeah, that's, that's enough. enough. That's enough. <sighs> we're, yeah, we're... But then I'm going to... No, no. Yeah. <laughs> Good game, everyone. Good game. Wow. Rock and roll. R- racing. Racing just to do enough lethal damage here. I'm going to write a song about this. It's going to really hit with the younger crowd. It's going to be my return hmm. to greatness. I think. You're sneaking. It's going to be my... It's, hopefully it won't be a sneak in because it'll work. Do, what, how does that compare mm. if you were never really there to begin with? You know what? That's not even... That doesn't apply to me. I was always here. Uh, so let's just uh, say that rock and roll will never die. And um, even though I did die in this game, that I didn't actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, rock and roll will never die. Uh, but let's go for the wrap-up to Sean and Andy in the booth. Hmm. 
Oh, wow. What a true slugfest. Yeah. Uh, lots of big plays in this game. Very interesting. Let's get to the Slippery Bogarty wrap-up. I'll tell you what, I was feeling pretty good in this game up until we saw a uh, whatever that card is called. Debt to the Deathless. Debt to the Deathless. Oh, man. Yeah, like I have to admit, I think I was feeling pretty good. I had a lot of stuff. It's just a very stalled board. Not a lot to do, which gave Rob what he needed to do to just basically debt us out of the game. <laughs> yeah, he de- like we, this, is, this is it. Don't accrue debt. Yeah. Stay debt free. Yeah. Step one, pay off your debt first things first then buy those fancy things especially if you spent your whole life rocking like right. there you're even more susceptible to debt so you want to stay free of that uh but there was a lot going on in this i had a crazy board drawing so many cards oh yeah the the the, the true i've never seen a yarok deck in play before yeah the, the value of that was unbelievable it was disgusting it's wild you can't really let yarok sit around for a while unless you're gonna debt to deathless them to death oh boy it didn't matter in the end no it didn't uh so shall we go to the commander and play of the game i think we should i think this one is i mean there were a lot of big plays in this game like you said but i think there was one really you know the one that turned the tide here was uh milo dropping that elish norn and tempered steel in the same turn out of nowhere all of a sudden rob's you know 80 plus life total is nowhere near safe right he cut down his life in two swings yeah from almost 100 yeah Uh, and we we thought the only route to victory was the uh the infect the plague mirror yeah i thought for sure rob was gonna go down from the uh, we all forgot about that uh that uh blue and white board wipe that he revealed at the very beginning of the game. That's right. The Frilled Mystic also became a thing. Anyways, oh. it was a huge play for Milo. Uh, Rob, you know, thought he was safe and then in an instant wasn't. I mean, that that's that was the theme of this this game and that's the theme of rock and roll. You think you're safe and the next you're, you know, you think you're at the top of the charts and the next, you know, you can't even get a single to crack the Spotify 500. <laughs> <laughs> well, well what a great game it was though and thanks everyone for watching and remember go uh hit subscribe if you love it and uh and check out our patreon but thanks so much for watching we'll see you guys next time bye bye thanks for watching if you liked it make sure you hit subscribe and ding that bell to find out when more videos come out we've got comedy videos the cb vlog deck techs all kinds of fun stuff and if you really love what we do check us out on patreon.com slash commandersbury to find out how to donate to help us produce more content bye